Hello, uh, welcome to another quite a quick vlog, or maybe. Um, yeah, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm shooting the moon. There's been a lot of vlogs at the moment, uh, a lot of people shooting the moon. Obviously because we're stuck indoors, we can't go out anywhere. And I just thought I'd take this opportunity to do a quick video, join the uh, bandwagon and do a quick video on Compton shooting the moon. And I'm going to try and do a bit of post-processing. Now the post-processing, I'm going to try and do this differently. I haven't done it yet, so I'm going to do it later on, probably tomorrow evening or something, and have a look at it tomorrow evening and see if I can process it a slightly different way. A lot of people have been saying about stacking the moon. Uh, Tanya on our LVA, Landscape Vlogography Adventures Facebook group, she stacks, stacks image on top of image on top of image to get a sharper picture of the moon. So I'm trying that tonight. And I'm also shooting at the, um, the uh, 11, F11 rule, or whatever they call it, the 11 rule. Um, basically, set your camera to F11, which I have, F11, and then balance your shutter speed with your ISO. So on the Fuji, I can't set, uh, my lowest ISO is 160, and I can't set my, set my shutter speed to 160. Even in manual, I can't use 160. The only two I've got that matches together is 250. So I'm gonna use an ISO of 250, which is low enough as it is, and I'm then setting my shutter speed to one 250 of a second. So I've got exactly the same shutter speed as I have ISO, and set the camera to f11 this is one of these things that a lot of people have been recommending um, for me i've got the 400 mil the 100 400 on the fuji um, so i've set it out to 400 mil i've also got the 1.4 converter so i don't know what the maths is i'll try and have a look at the maths and i'll stick it up on the screen somewhere for you um, i've got a 1. Uh, 1.53 crop on the uh, fuji um, the next thing i've done is i've set the shutter to an electronic shutter so it doesn't move at all there's no vibrations when it takes the photograph um, the next thing i've done is i've got a 10 second timer on which i've put that on so it's going to take 10 seconds to let the camera settle itself right down i've also got my big ben row out and i've rammed it into the into the soil so the spikes are in the ground it is as solid as a rock it is not moving there's no vibrations or anything so this is as most stable as i can get this camera do remember to turn your uh, your image stabilizer off um, you don't want that on way on the tripod. So right, what am I going to do? I'm going to set the set the focus point, bang in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to get the moon right in the middle because that's going to be the sharpest point of the lens. I'm sure it is, and the sharpest point of the sensor. And for this, I'm just going to hit it over onto automatic for starters, and I'm going to use a very tiny little focusing point right on the centre of the moon. And I'm just going to use that as a base to set my set my focusing up. I've also got my loop which you probably can't see in the dark. This is one of those uh, things. I had it out the other day uh, or the other week when you might see it on a video for uh, focusing. And basically it's a little cup that I put up to my eye. I've not got my glasses on because I can see cl better closer up like this. Uh, I put it onto the back of the screen and then I can focus and make sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock all the information off the screen so I don't want anything in my way. So I've got a completely blank screen now on the back. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in maximum zoom right up as close as I can to the moon and I'm just going to check the focus with my little loop to make sure and the reason I'm not using the EVA is because it's you can set the EVA to your eye and I don't particularly want it set to my eye I want to use the rear screen which I know is 100% in focus and 100% sharp all the time um, so I'm going to look around that moon and everything looks really really sharp even at auto focus I'm just going to give the end of the lens just a bit of a twizzle just to see if I can get that to pull in any sharper I've got focus peaking on and the peaking is just glistening on the craters on the moon and again I'm going to mention Tanya and I'm going to borrow her image I'm going to get permission off of her to borrow her image she put an image up with all the names of the craters and stuff and I thought that was absolutely fan fantastic thing to do and uh, so I'm going to borrow that off and put that out for you so you can have a look at the names of the craters because I think it's brilliant I think that's as sharp as sharp as I can possibly get it so I'm now going to hit my shutter button I'm going to move the moon back the moon travels really fast so I'm going to put the moon back in the middle of the and I've just hit me focus button like an idiot. So I'm gonna to have to refocus that. So I'm gonna do again, auto focus. Even though it's on manual, it will auto focus on the back of the screen. I'm just gonna zoom back in again, just to make sure that we are sharp. And I'm not even gonna to have to check it because it's that sharp. Even on auto focus, absolutely fantastic. Auto focus on this thing is brilliant. Right, so 10 second timer, hit the button, no movement hold my breath and let the camera be as still as possible 
five, four, three, two, one. That's it, it's taking a picture. And then I'm gonna hit the shutter again. And I'm gonna take four or five photographs of the moon, all in this position, all at this setting. And then I'm just gonna tinker, tinker, tinker with the, photo, the focusing just slightly and do another five images. And this is, the, this is what we're gonna to use to stack. Each image could have slight difference to it. And when you put them all together, you'll get a bigger file and it should stack and be really, really, really sharp and really, really nice. Again, it's looking pretty good. The moon's a lovely shape. This, this 1100 rule works really, really well. What you're doing is you're basically taking the light off the, off the moon because the moon's that bright with the reflection of the sun. So uh, yeah, that's just pretty much all you're doing. The sky's quite dark. Even though there's a bit of blue in the sky, the sky's looking quite dark on this. Um, I might try a couple at 100, ISO 160 and maybe F125, something like that. F125, one, one two-fifth of a second. Um, that's what I meant to say. So again, we'll take another couple of images like that. There's no stars out yet. Oh yes, there is. I've just seen a couple of stars just pop out now. So we might do a few stars tonight as well. I might come out later on and do a few. You probably can't see me very well. It's quite dark. But I'm getting this nice little reflection off the end of the uh, viewfinder, and I. So how's everyone doing for the lockdown? Are you all managing to get out? Are you shooting the moon? Are you doing what you got to do? plenty of flowers and stuff like that. Right, now I'm gonna check the focus again. So I'm gonna move the moon back into the middle. I'm gonna zoom in 100%. This is the boring bit for you. I'm gonna move my focusing down. I'm gonna get this loop out so I can see as clear as I possibly can. And I've just moved my little lever. Let's just get onto the middle of the moon. There's a nice big crater there. So I'm just gonna gently, gently, gently twiddle the focus just a little tiny bit just to see if I can just get a little bit more. I'm just gonna have a quick look through the viewfinder, not that it makes any difference, because the viewfinder will not be on my eye without my glasses, so it's looking pretty good. But what I am looking at is the focus peaking, and the focus peaking is just glistening on the craters. And I'll do the same again. I'm gonna take another three or four pictures, and then uh, that's all I can do out here. So I'll shoot into the computer and it'll probably be tomorrow or the day after by the time you're seeing me next. So I'll have a different hat on, have my glasses on and uh, yeah. One good thing about shooting at home is you can have a cup of coffee fresh. Mm. Much better than out of a flask, isn't it? Right, I'll see you on the computer inside. Well. It looks like we've jumped two or three days and uh, we're in the morning. So we've gone from night time to morning. Um, I'm sat in front of the computer as promised. Uh, I'm just gonna run you through a bit of a basic edit on what I've done with that moon. Now this is also uh, a thanks to Tanya as well because she's been doing some moon stuff as is a lot of people on this lockdown. And uh, Tanya was saying that she stacks her images. So I'm just gonna have a go at stacking the image as per um, what uh, Tanya's been doing. And I've also been Googling it and YouTubing it as well. And so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna land a little bit of color to the moon. Now, I always slated color in the moon because the moon should be gray as far as I'm concerned, but there is actual color and I'm just gonna show you how to get that little bit of color out of the moon. Um, so yeah, just let's, uh, let's jump into Lightroom and I'm only gonna do a basic one. Um, I'll explain once I get into Lightroom. All right, so as you can see in Lightroom, um, we've got a full set of images. Uh, ignore the last one you've just seen, uh, but this is a full set of images. There's about 40 odd images that I've taken and you can see it ranges from where I start in the middle as the moon creeps up uh, a little bit higher off in the frame. Um, so I've, I've managed to stack these images in their sets as well. I've got a stack of 11, I've got a stack of 10, stack of 9. As you saw, uh, I took the images um, in different sections, at slightly different focuses. Um, and this is the last one, I'll show you that in a moment. That's the, the result from stacking all of these images. In fact, I'll, I'll just pop it up now for you. Um, this is the result from stacking all the images. And like I say, there's a little bit of color in there and a nice little bit of clarity and contrast between, uh, between them all. So let's jump back over to grid. Uh, what I'm only gonna do is I'm only gonna show you this on the first stack of 10 because my computer's that slow. 
Um, it'll take forever to do the whole lot. It took me nearly half an hour just to upload them. So let's go for the first 10. And to highlight these, you click on the first one, go down to the last one, and you can see it's sort of creeping up and creeping up and creeping up as you go through the images. Uh, so we'll go down to the last one. If you press Shift on your computer, on a Windows computer that is, and then click the left mouse, um, it highlights them all. And then we're just going to hover over one of them, right click, go down to Edit, drop down to Open in Layers in Photoshop. And then that's what we'll bring over to Photoshop. So you'll see the layers are building in the bottom here. Uh, they take the time, like I said, my computer's quite slow, so they'll gradually build all these layers. You're gonna end up with 10 images down in this bottom corner. So uh, yeah, I'll fast forward that for you. We now have uh, a full set of images. You can see down here in the bottom corner, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got ten images in there. The problem we've got now, though, is all these images, as you can see, are all in slightly different places. And what we need to do is we need to align these images. So it's quite easy in this. So all we do is make sure the top one's highlighted. Go down to the bottom corner, right down in the right-hand corner. Uh, press Shift again and press Select. Uh, uh, press left mouse. Uh, what this will do is it will select all of those images. Go up to edit up in the top left hand corner there. Click on edit, go down to photo align or uh, auto align layers. And what you do is click on auto align, make sure it's on auto, click OK, and that will do, uh, that again, it'll take its time and its process. So I'll jump forward, and what that'll do is I'll align all the layers. layers are all aligned. If I turn these layers off, you can see the bottom corners where it's stacked the images in different places. But if I turn all these off now, you'll see the moon stays exactly in the same place. So we switch them all back on. They're all still highlighted. And what we're going to do now, while they're all still highlighted in the bottom right hand corner, we're going to go back into edit and we're going to go down to auto blend layers. And in auto blend layers, I'm just going to leave it on uh, stack images and I'm going to click OK. And again, I'm just going to speed this up and uh, I'll come back to you once it's ready. done. Uh, you can see it's auto filled as well, it's filled in all the gaps and the stuff around there. We don't really want all that anyway because we're going to crop the image down. You can also see down here on the side if you go to the bottom right hand corner um, you've got all these layer masks have been added so it's picked certain part of the images to, to layer on top of each other. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give this a quick crop to get rid of some of that black. So I'm going to go to my crop tool which is I keep mine on this section here click on crop and I'm just going to select a square crop. So I'm going to go to a one to one crop this should give me a square crop when it does something. There we go. And I'm just going to pull the side in just to make it a bit tighter and to bring my moon into the central of the crop. And I'm going to crop it in quite tight because I want the moon to be the main thing right in the middle of the image because it's nice and round, nice and circular. So click OK. That will just crop the image down. That gives us a nice square. So if you zoom in, you can see there's a there's a bit of contrast. We should never really shoot a full moon because you never get all the contrast and texture on a full moon. Um, and I'm only working off these <coughs> 10 images. Excuse me. So right, so go back to the image. Um, what we want to do now is try and pull out a little bit of the contrast and texture in it. Um, so the best way of doing this is to go back to your layers and uh, make a copy of your top layer. So your top layer is your finished merged layer. You can see that it says merged. So we just drag that down over the... Uh, new layer and it'll give you a copy as you can see there. Now with that copy layer go to the top of the screen, go on to filters, click filters, come right down to other, into other, drop down to high pass. This is a high pass filter and you can see the image has gone grey. Now as you move the pixels, the radius of the pixels, you can see it really does make a lot of difference to the image um, and that is really, you can test different things, it's just going to absolutely blow it to pieces. So I'm going to work off about 5% because you can add extra layers. So I'm going to work off about 5%. It just gives you a little bit of texture down here in these uh, 
corner parts. You can move the image around. If you click on the area, you can see it just brings up a little bit of texture in these areas there. So I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, it's still grey. So we need to convert that now uh, to something else. So you go into your, um, your modes, your overlay modes, or whatever you call them. I've forgotten what they're called now. So we're going to click on overlay. So we're just going to click overlay. And you can see there that... Uh, it's it's gone back to a normal color but if i click that on and off now you can see the difference in the image let me zoom in a little bit so you can see the bottom so if i click this off and click it back on and click it off and click it on you can see the difference there where it's just bringing up a little bit of texture in the in the actual moon itself oh i'll just move the image let's just put that back right so i quite like that but i'm going to actually do another layer so i'm going to actually drag that copied layer and i'm actually going to add another one and again, if you switch that on and off, you can see it's just a little bit harsher now. And I'm just going to drop the opacity of that last one down to about 50%. And that will just give me enough there. I think there's enough texture and clarity in the moon now to, uh, to work with. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a colours palette. Colour and hue saturation. So we're going to go down here to this bottom little half crescent, half moon sort of thing down there. I'm going to click on that. And we're going to go up to, in fact, no, we're going to do a levels first. I'm going to go on to levels. And the reason being is, I'll show you this. I want to just drag the lights up a little bit. I want to bring my whites up so the moon starts to look really bright and quite prominent. If I scroll back out, you can see it looking a lot more prominent in the, in the, against the black. And then I'm going to get hold of my middle slide, my mid-tones. And I'm going to bring my mid-tones down just slightly, just like so. Just only a little bit, just to bring a little bit of texture and contrast back into this area here. Of course this is going off because this is in the shadows. So we'll click OK for that one. And then again, it's like I said, we're going to go back into this uh, palette and we're going to look for hue and saturation. And this is going to bring up the saturation palette. Now, <clears throat> just for a start example, example, just for a sample, I'm going to drag this right up to show you what it does. <coughs> and excuse me. Right, if I bring it right up, it just absolutely destroys it. If I back it down to about 90%, you can just see now you've got some blues. I don't know where the blues are coming from. And you've got some yellows and oranges and a little bit of yellow around this side. There's actually a lot of colour in that moon. And I never believed there ever was until recently with watching all these lockdown videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to around 50%, I think. I'm happy with 50%. It's just giving me a slight tinge of colour. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a hold of this uh, saturation layer. And I'm going to drag it down and duplicate it. And you see you get a slightly different, get a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same again. I'll drag it down and duplicate it again. And see it's just bringing up a bit more colour each time. And if I toggle it off and on, you can see there's a slight difference in the image. So all I want to do is just bring out a little bit of tone, a little bit of colour. I don't want it overly saturated, just a little bit of colour. And that last one's maybe just a bit strong. So I'm just going to back off the opacity. Let's go down to about 75%. Toggle it on and off. I think that'll do. I just want a little bit of tone, a little bit of colour and just to make sure everything looks all right. Now, the only bit I'm not quite sure about is this green fringing I'm getting down the bottom of the moon. So I'm gonna stay on this uh, top layer, as you can see on the right-hand corner. It's got a mask on it. So if I go to my pen tool now, and make sure my pen is black, as it is, just reset them and go to black. I'm gonna paint over this. Now this is 100% opacity, you can see at the top there, 100% opacity with a soft brush, and I'm just gonna paint over that and what that's going to do is get rid of that layer. You can see by doing that, that on this layer over here, I've got a little black line. So I'm going to go down to the layer underneath it and do the same again. Just on this edge where you get a bit of fringe. And you can see that what it's doing is it's covering up that layer. And it's getting rid of that fringing in the bottom corner. I just didn't want that little bit of green. Because I'm not quite sure where that green is coming from. Um, but I don't want that green in my image. It's just It'll just spoil it. So I'm going to go back to standard moon colour on that little bottom bit. Right, so that's about it. Um, there's not much more I can do in Photoshop on that one, so I'm going to close it down and I'll open it up in Lightroom and I'll show you the last few final touches in Lightroom and uh, yeah, the image will be done. Right, so we've gone back over into Lightroom. Photoshop's closed itself down. You can see it's saved as a TIFF. That's how I've got mine set up. And this is your image. So if I click on D now, that'll bring up my develop module. And in the develop module, you'll see this lovely large picture of the moon pop up there. And uh, it's got some nice detail, a nice little bit of contrast around the edges, and these nice textures and colours. But what I want to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to sharpen it a little bit. Now I know it's already been sharpened, but I just want to tinker it just a little bit more. So I'm just going to bring this sharpening up. Now 
different cameras will work in different ways. My Fuji doesn't like a lot of sharpening, so with this being a TIFF file, I should get away with about 30, 30 to 40 percent. And if I just click on the mask uh, on this bottom right hand corner, if you click on masking, but if I hold Alt first and then click on the mask, I can actually set a mask and drag it up. And all I want to do is just sharpen the main little features on the moon. I don't want to sharpen any of the large flat bits or the black bits. So that'll do me. It just takes a little bit of sharpening around these edges. I might just pop it up just a little bit more, just to bring a little bit more sharpness to the edge. Uh, once I've done that, I'll close that down. And the only other thing I'm going to do, in fact, I'll open detail back up again. And one other thing I'm going to do is I'll bring the luminance up a little bit. And what this will do, this should just take away a little bit of the a little bit of the um, noise if there's a little bit of noise in the image only four percent three or four percent that's all I want and that's near enough about done I don't think there's much more I can do I can try a little bit of vibrance just to see if I can pull those colors out a little bit more it does actually make a little bit of difference so let's give it about 10 percent of vibrance plus 10 on the vibrance just to pull out those colors a little bit more and it's looking quite soft and quite natural there's not much more I can do with that image just try a little bit of dehaze see if that makes a bit of a difference it just makes it a little bit more contrasty so let's let's just go with a little bit of a little bit of dehaze about seven percent and I actually quite like that it's a finished article so I'm going to click save on that so we're going to go into edit export wherever my export is export and I've got my own preset already set up for video and this is my 1080 at seven uh, 72 dots per inch so I'll click on OK and that will save that image then into the file. So I'm going to cancel it for now because I've already got images. So uh, yeah, go back to grid. And uh, that's about it for Lightroom. So I'm going to put this image up on that side there for you. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Do you like the image? I'm actually going to show you the image um, that I took where I stacked all 46 or 45 images. Because um, there is a slight difference in the... Uh, contrast in between each in each image I took so um, or each set of images and it gave a slightly better finish at the end um, so yeah hope that's enjoyable hope uh, hope you learned something from that shooting the moon and I've learned something over the last few weeks on how to get a little bit of color and a little bit of text throughout the moon and I've got a bit of a project on the go like I said this is uh, this is something I want to try and do again I want to try and get a really really cool image of the moon so I've got a bit of a project on the go for the next month so we will see what happens and if it happens I'll put it up on my Facebook and groups anyway. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, ask and I'll see if I can answer them for you. But until then, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Ciao for now. Stay safe.